During my past travels, I've learned and I've observed a lot. But what if there is more to learn? What would it feel like living with those who have the exact opposite of you? Have I found this in my travels or do I need to travel further? The modern world is making it more and more difficult for such people to live their ways. So can we still find those who do so right here and right now? And what can we learn from them? What have we forgotten that they are still so connected to? Those who are still so deeply living inside of the natural world. To find out, I think I have to take you further and get taught by simply listening. What if I told you that there is a tribe that still lives the way our ancestors used to, before any type of civilization? Would you believe me? A couple of weeks ago I was fortunate enough to spend my time with a tribe like this. A group most of you probably haven't heard of, and when I'm about to show you the way they live, you will probably not believe me. However, this is their preferred way of living, and they've been doing this for centuries. The Hadzabe tribe are hunter-gatherers living a very primitive but peaceful life in Tanzania. Some might think their way of living makes them poor, but the more time you spend with them, the more you realize it's the complete opposite for them. They have heard a fair bit about the modern world, but still choose not to participate in it. When they have all you need for happiness, the things that we take for granted on a daily basis, who can blame them? This trip was one of the most eye-opening experiences I've ever had, and I'm excited to share it with you. So it's day four here in Tanzania, and we now left the Maasai tribe in the area of Old Donjulankai, the volcano. We now made it to the second campsite we're staying at, and from this campsite we'll be visiting two tribes, the Hadzabe tribe and the, the Toga tribe. Let's go and see what these tribes are up to. Oh. <laughs> The children here are so nice. They're just observing. <laughs> and now they're laughing. Mambo. 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 Time to say goodbye to the kids. Guairi. Guairi. So Nixon just came back and we're good to go. So let's meet this tribe. Hope you're ready. Ready. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's go. At first, I felt a bit nervous getting to the tribe, but soon noticed that there was no need to be. We first arrived to the women of the tribe who were by a campfire and greeted us very nicely. Very soon, you realize that you arrive to these places with a completely wrong picture in mind of these tribes, and you start to notice that there is not much of a difference between you and them. As we sat down by the men of the tribes, joining their morning routine, which is smoking weed and getting ready for the hunting, my questions started to rise. All right, so... A little bit, but for them, they smoke a lot more, as you can see. And... Why, why do they smoke the weed in the morning? Um, normally, the reason for them to smoke marijuana is that it gives them the spirit and also to feel much better and always to become good to do anything they want to do in their daily activity. So now Nabil is going to try some. I remember asking to my guide, what are they laughing about? And my guide said, well, actually nothing special. They were laughing about one of the tribesmen who is getting too high lately. And they were making jokes about it. And I started to think that besides of them living such simple lives, are there actually differences between us? And this is from Antelope. 
And here they have the dogs and the arrows ready for when they go hunting. And they're really welcoming with each other. <coughs> so here they have the arrows, the bow, the dogs. And they're all ready for hunting. And behind there they have a little hut as well where they stay. It's really inspiring because it shows that you can actually live very comfortable with nothing, almost nothing, just by hunting. Could you live like this? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I may try it. Maybe if you smoke yeah, weed like that every morning. If you morning, smoke weed like that, it gets, gets a bit easier, right? Yeah, it'll be easier to stay in the house. Around this time, there are still around 1,000 Hadza people living in Tanzania. However, only around 400 Hadza still survive exclusively based on their traditional means of foraging. For this exact reason, the area has a slightly guarded perimeter, avoiding poaching as well as uncontrolled tourism. So we're going hunting with them now, they're very fast, so let's try to keep up. Man, they're so fast. <laughs> well, I think they just caught a bird, I, like almost got it. So. And with the gimbals, I'm trying to follow them and film them, but it's hard. We gotta catch up with them again. So we're now hunting with them. They're really fast, so we're trying to catch up, but as the guide has explained as he tribe, on this particular tribe, the families are so special. It's like the last forgotten link that we have to the way we used to live. So welcoming, so nice. Uh, they're even willing to slow down their hunting just for us to film. So this is so dope. What is your first impression so far? They smoke so much weed and they're so fit for one. And two, they're not even breathing hard. Or oh, seems to be walking that fast, but they're going so fast. Just really impressive. So with them they have different arrows. One arrow for the baboons, for the monkeys. And there's another arrow for the antelope. And I'll show later why, because the guide will explain uh, what the purpose is of these different arrows. They always take one with poison in case there's a predator or if they want to hunt a big animal. So, and these poisons, the poisonous arrows, oh, I'm so tired. They're not even breeding. The poison arrows, they are taken from leaves around the camp and then they're cooked. And with what's left, when the water evaporates, they put it on the arrow and that's what they hunt with. After around one hour searching for animals with no luck, the guys found two bush babies. In their language, they're called nagatis, which means night monkeys. Because the bush babies are considered nocturnal and spend the majority of their time living in trees. The Hatzabe mostly eat meat and everything they eat is gathered by themselves. A couple of other things that they consume are honey, berries and tubers. With honey being the most energized dense food that they can find and is highly prized by the Hatzabe. So they're now trying to hunt this small little monkey, second one. Let me show you if you can see it. <laughs> so they just got an animal. It's actually a really cute animal. So it feels really bad because it was still alive and the eyes of the animal are so cute. But this is their way of living with yeah. Look at the little red. I feel so bad, but it's, it's uh, their way of life, you know. Especially as a vegetarian, I don't like to. <coughs> I don't eat animals, but this is their way of life. They're only food source, so it's okay. the only way to eat. Yeah, they just hunted that with bow and arrow. It's crazy. It's the only thing they eat. The only thing. The only way of hunting. He's telling us to go with him again. See how cute the animal was. They got this one, they'll go back and eat it. Fall! Oh, fuck, I'm tired. It's not me. I feel like, I feel like, like, a, like a National Geographic documentary, you know?
the crazy thing is that any of these scenes that we've shot are not staged. I've, I've just been running around behind them and just getting these shots and it's like as if they're staged. That's how, how easy these shots are to get. Um, and oh yeah, as you can see, the, they've killed so many animals already. So there's the antelope skin that they're wearing. And he's wearing baboon skin. And this is this is so real. This is how they hunt, how they live. And it's really cool how guys like a uh, friend here conserve these places so they stay as real as possible because they love the way they're living. You can see how happy they are and how they are in their habitat, man. Like they love it. It's so, so sick. So, another funny thing is they just told us to move because, oh, like a second ago, they were filming. Uh, you guys were filming and Nabil as well. Nabil has an iPhone video, I'll put it up now. How he almost got hit with an arrow in the head, I swear to God. I'll put it up now, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's, it's dangerous. That's why now they're saying like... They're about to catch it because it's really injured, so it's not moving much anymore. Oh, okay. Let's see. I watch it. Look at like the picture. Ah, right, got to go lie and I come back. Ah, it's like a good idea. Missed. So it has the arrow in it, and they're actually using a wooden arrow for this one because it's so small, so they don't <laughs> want to lean <laughs> the knee. And they actually cannot climb this tree because it has all, all these spikes. So yeah, there's the animal stuff. I'm just trying to catch it. Right. See, it has the bow. He's trying to push the arrow. And then there's the arrow in the animal. And the animal they just caught is called the bush baby. It's really cute. I'll show you what it looks like now. So he caught the first one and he caught the second one as well. So he's going up now in the tree. So when you hear them talk in their language, the first thing you'll notice is that they say Coco all the time. And Coco means friend. So that's cool. And that's their meal for today, so they got a good breakfast. <laughs> right? Yes, that's a nice one. One, now they've caught two bush babies uh, and I was wondering how long they can eat. Uh, just one for one meal. Okay, that's one meal. Yeah, just for the lunch only. <laughs> so for example, now I think they got quite lucky, right? Yes. They got quite lucky. Yeah. They have two bush babies. I don't know how much the other guys Later have. Later they will continue for hunting. So? Oh, oh, really? Yes. So this is just one meal? Yes. And they hunted one and a half hours, two yes. hours maybe? More than And they have more to... Than. More, right? Yes. We're can, already can hunting more for more three hours. Uh, two hours or like six hours they can spend around the bush looking for the big animals. Not like that. And then they have one meal, so they yeah. have to continue hunting. So yes. that's... Uh, it's a tough life, but uh, that's why they're so in such a good shape. They're walking without it's, any problems. So yeah. Hasabi tribe. It's amazing. So there's another tribe that we're going to later, which is the, the, the Toga tribe. Oh shit, <laughs> I almost fell. And that's where they get their arrowheads from. So this is something they cannot make themselves because it's from iron. So they trade animals. They used to trade animals and they still do actually. Sometimes they trade money if they get tips. Um, but they don't ask for tips actually, they don't care. So yeah, they used to trade and they, they, they still trade arrow tips for food with the Toga tribe. So this is how they get their arrow tips and that's everything else is made by themselves and obtained by themselves. So they're about to get back to camp. And it's dinner time. Now that we finished the hunting, it was time to see how the Hadzabe prepare their catch. Due to their diet, which doesn't include any processed foods, they carry a great variety of microbes in their guts, making them have a very good immune system and metabolism, and is even believed to influence their moods and behavior in a very good way. 
So they put the animal on top of the fire. I'm not sure how they're gonna eat it, but they're just burning it like this, as you can see. Before leaving the tribe, I wanted to sit down and ask a question. I was really curious if they were okay with us visiting and how they felt about it. And this was his response. The other man answered like this. He said they feel happy and they enjoying the life when they see uh, the Western people visit them. Because as they see their, their color is black and other people they are white. And so when they join them, they feel so happy to feel like other people, I mean all their human beings, so it seems they are happy with the Western people visit. From a very young age, the guys from the Hadza tribe are taught archery and can snipe even the smallest bird from meters away with their bow and arrow. And as a goodbye, they wanted to show us their skills one last time. The see shoots better. Oh, so close. The Adzabe have reminded me where we all come from and what it really means to be human. They might seem poor and undeveloped, but when you take a closer look, their lives are filled with community, generosity and compassion. They carry no words such as jealousy, competition or hurry. Even with the threat they face from us, they welcome us, showing us their way of living as proud as they are. But would we do the same? In this world where we constantly divide ourselves, I hope this can be a reminder to you that we're all in this together. And that sometimes our biggest differences are elsewhere to be found.